celebrating the heritage of black artists within the electronic music space and um, how we can encourage more artists and brand kids in general to get involved so interesting topic um this was a conversation i'm gonna say between seth Troxler and the soul clap dudes um they were basically you know speaking about what's happening in the states i think seth Troxler's obviously moved back to the states from his stint in europe and he's essentially been reminded i think he mentioned in the interview he's been reminded of the prevalence of the the issues around race in america that are very different to the issues that we have with race in the europe for the most part europe has a very complicated issue with race but it's mostly a class-based thing um which has its benefits and obviously it's um has its pros and its cons but it's not as um i guess it's not as uh it's not as red hot as it is in the states because they have this thing they haven't dealt with right slavery um they haven't dealt with slavery or kind of come up against it and really tried to address um that ill and sort of attacked it head on they've sort of kind of tried to kind of dance around it and say that that was a long time ago but it seems as if there's still some um ptsd there felt by a whole generation of people who probably you know whose grandparents that were around during the civil rights era are probably long gone now yeah but those um pain that kind of anguish is kind of trickling down and of course sparked by the death untimely death of george floyd um i guess this you know it's probably must be a bit of a culture shock for Seth Troxler. So they're talking about, in general, just the lack of representation in the electronic music space when it comes to DJs, mostly because it's front facing. But I'd say for the entire business, somebody like myself who is an aspiring DJ, right? I play a lot here in London in local bars and pubs and stuff. And, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's been an issue to get gigs because of the way of the color of my skin. I don't think I noticed that. Um, I think maybe there might be a perception issue in terms of people expecting you to play a certain type of music, but then, you know, I don't really um, get my nose put out of shape because of that, because they don't know me from Adam. Um, that's an issue. But then I also have to say that once I do go into parties, or especially the parties I go to in London, warehouse raids and stuff, um, it's not even a concern about the lack of representation for the black people for me personally. It's just a lack of representation in terms of DJ lineups not reflecting the crowds that attend those places, such as, you know, I don't know, uh, Junction 2 is a good example. You go to Junction 2 um, and you look at the crowd that attends it, and it's a pretty diverse group of people, right? All different colors and creeds, different genders, and for the most part, the lineups are pretty formulaic. It's the same kind of like, you know, techno bros playing with a with a sprinkling of a couple of, you know, um, in the moment girls here and there, but it's pretty kind of, you know, by the by there's no real big surprises there. there's no real introduction of new talent there's no kind of highlighting some underground crews who are doing some good shit it's just the same old people that can guarantee ticket sales no problem with that but you know you want something fresh so sometimes when i look at people that complain about the lack of black representation in dance music i sometimes think to myself the issue is probably bigger than just black people the issue is just that representation especially when it comes to lineups in dance music is only kind of focusing on one area of the scene when it's this whole other area of the scene that needs to be looked after and especially in the uk because we don't have a really cohesive culture or the cohesive kind of ecosystem around smaller clubs that can sort of survive with a 2am license um that can survive with you know the cat with the noise pollution complaints from the council um that can survive or that have the kind of methodology of having maybe a residence uh roster of djs playing instead of you know hiring people who are maybe mid-level djs to come and play and kind of you know take up your whole budget that way um because of all those things um it what ends up happening i think the error is that you end up having people who are not necessarily ready to play big festivals or command that sort of fee or get that you know I don't know what that would be receptive or that the crowd would be receptive to having to compete for those slots when really they should be competing for the slots just between that stage there should be a, a stage there should be like a free stage process right to become a, a really successful dj like playing locally playing like in you know nationwide kind of big clubs and then going like touring and playing in mega clubs and shit that's how it should be those three steps but because we don't really have that middle bit in the uk and it's just the bottom bit it's just a kind of entry level bars and pubs once you kind of once you're kind of outgrown that step 
you can't then transfer straight to the third. You have to go to the middle. We don't have the middle. And I think they raised some good points about it here in this clip that Seth Chuck's, uh, um I'm going to quickly load up for you here. <coughs> he mentions it more eloquently than I did. But let's just show you what he said. That was at what? 11.07. Let it load up. Boop, boop, boop. Let's get back here a bit. Hear what he said. Bear with me one second. Put it back a bit more here. Come on, come on, come on. Probably got too many tabs. That's why it's taking ages to load. There you go. Okay, it was with Pete Tong the interview. Having Let's more. Let's go. 11. There you go. I mean, 2013, you're the number one DJ in the world, according to, you know, um, Resident Resident. Advisor, which was, you know, obviously a, a great um, accolade back then, you know, alongside Jamie, Martinez Brothers, as you've said, you are, you are kind of role models. Why? What can we do? Or what, you know, why? How, how can, we, think, encourage, how can we encourage more people from the black communities to kind of engage um, I and think participate it's the same, in our world? The same with as the effect we've seen with having more female DJs online lineups is like taking that and like promoters and festivals being more um, more aware that like maybe instead of booking another guy, like maybe they should book a, a woman in their place. Like, so now all that I'm happened. saying- <laughs> And that did happen, right? That was, a, I remember that being a big thing for those for a while, there was a big push to get more females on lineups. And again, at the time, I think even still, I'm not really a fan for the whole uh, dividing the line as 50-50, right? I, I think um, opportunities to play on, you know, in clubs or for particular party promotions or you know, for particular club nights or to be on a label roster should be earned, right? Via your skills and not by what's hanging between your legs or by how you self-identify. But I also do understand how it can work because sometimes these bookers and these event promoters they're stuck in their ways and they probably from what from what i would ascertain from my short time promoting club nights you get you get it put in a weird position because you get burnt more often than not when you put on nights and you pop your money right most of the time that you put on parties your friends don't turn up um, no one else turns up and you have to pay the dj because you promised him you'd pay them right and then you end up being out of pocket so you get burned a lot more times than you actually make money and especially if you're in the scene and you're putting on parties because you're doing it for the love you're definitely going to lose a ton of cash because you just want to put on a good night and have something that your friends or people in the scene can remember you for right once you're long and gone so um I guess with that um there is sort of like a tendency to sort of like be risk averse right to kind of go for the safe option okay let me go book this dude who i know or this girl who i know is gonna uh guarantee me a certain amount of rsvps on the resident advisor events page gonna remind he's gonna you know get me a certain amount of number of clicks on facebook or likes whatever he's gonna record me whatever so mix is gonna get this command of traction I get the desire to do that, but I think if you really want to enact change, you have to kind of, every, there has to be a concerted effort from everyone involved, right? From partners like myself or customers like myself to give um, that newer DJ a chance and not be put off because it's not your favorite bro playing. Um, it's also in the pro promoters to be a little bit more risk, uh, to be able to take more risk, right? To kind of push the bow out and maybe, you know, supplement the you know instead of having a, a roster full of like you know headliners maybe supplement the opening acts with people that are local or people they just found on soundcloud or something i don't know whatever it may be just to kind of give people opportunities and chances um that's all that's really needed i think for the most part again i'm not a fan of just whole like let's just make it 50 50 and just get whoever is available that happens to be a girl or a boy to play in a lineup but i do think there needs to be some level of understanding of like the only way this scene will survive the way the scene will thrive really is if you are kind of reintroducing fresh talent um to the scene so that when the older guard kind of you know fall by the wayside or when pe you know people always need new heroes or people to look up to um you they have those people there ready and willing to go and i know for myself you know i know i can only imagine how it might, how it would feel to go to a party somewhere um 
listen to listen to a type of music that you kind of haven't really grown up with listening to in your area and then seeing someone behind a booth that looks like you that would be such a great and satisfying feeling and it might not mean that you end up being a dj yourself but it might just mean that you somehow feel accepted right you somehow feel like oh now i belong somewhere now i feel like you know i have a purpose in my life and it could completely change the course of your life just seeing somebody it looks like you behind a deck so i really do understand the importance of it um because i know for myself i know you know when i went to bed in and I kind of saw my first couple of black DJs playing behind the booth in the decks you know uh, there was that kind of mutual appreciation that kind of not of like fuck I know how I know how hard you must have worked to get behind that booth it's no joke so th- part of me is like I don't want you know gender splits on lineups but part of me is like it kind of probably is the only way to kind of enact some kind of change and to force the change into the industry that doesn't really like that much change that happened that happened and it worked <laughs> Big time and it's inspired more yeah. people because the more people you see yeah, that's true. on stage, the more you understand you yourself can also oh, yeah. take that exactly. path, there right? And I think that is something that what maybe hopefully one, when gigs do kick back off, that all festivals and promoters can also look at, you know, like it's kind of funny. I laughed at some point, like Deck Metal had released this thing of how they promote black artists, but they had like 10 out of 190 people booked who were of color, right? It's right. like, that's not really the conversation we're talking about all who of which were like you know heritage kind of kind of kind of artists you know right? yeah that that dick mantle post from a few again techno twitter can be a bit annoying because there can be some people on techno twitter who just moan and whine about the state of the industry and for the most part don't do much to actually change it or for sometimes they you know did you what's that thing called is it um what's it called this this it's a term right uh, I just discovered it actually on my Twitter. There's a there's a there's a term that kind of describes that, but Techno Twitter can be annoying. But that raising up of that post from Dick Mantle, where they sort of try to, you know, align themselves with Black Lives Matter, saying that you know they book black artists and and it happened to be again all the heritage people have I don't know Jeff Mills or somebody like that or Moody Man. It was like come on, you're not. And the most egregious part with Dick Mantle is that you know it's an it's it's Amsterdam, right? I'm pretty sure it's in Holland. Um, the school is there. They've got the red light radio, right? There's a, quite a young, vibrant scene, I'd imagine, in Amsterdam. I don't understand why they wouldn't have, why well, they wouldn't have the ability to highlight some up and coming DJs and artists that happen to be, you know, black or happen to be brown, happen to be Asian, whatever. They have to exist. It's even if they don't exist in Holland, they have to exist in a neighboring country, right? Um, in Europe, it must be. They must be around. So the fact that they don't highlight them or don't kind of push them to the fore is a problem. And the fact that they thought that they could highlight ten DJs out of one hundred and thirty-seven that happen to be black, and that would be enough, is like that's a joke, really, isn't it? Like especially considering that you know Deck Man was a pretty, I don't know, what would you say, a house maybe? It's my probably a house heavy festival, and you just imagine the kind of amount of people that they could have got um, from the scene who play house you know, in the quote unquote authentic way. Representation of, you know, of, of our people, especially considering that we really invented this music. And I think, and all those people are still out there who want to be playing. You know, I talked to Kay Alexi, I talked to a lot of, there's a lot of great black artists out there who are able to be booked, but they're not being booked. There's a lot of facsimiles of people making the same music who are celebrated where like, okay, you can book a Motor City drum ensemble, but you could just also book someone from, from Chicago, sure, Detroit, who's exactly, exactly. <laughs> gonna play yeah. that music better, you know, instead of a, you know, a guy from Germany playing all black music, you know, so. It's- yeah, it's a bit out of order for, you know, it's a bit out of order to kind of throw um, MCDE under the bus like that, but that is, that is a really accurate point. And again, I, I, I don't really know what the answer is. I don't know if the answer is reform in lineups. I don't know if the answer is uh, forcing the event book is a big, pick minorities but then you know how do you classify a minority how about if you self-identify as mix and you're not i don't know it's just too much just too murky or if it's the onus on the people that are actually complaining who are actually being short changed to maybe you know do what this woman does right where you to essentially put together an agency that represents or that highlights people who have been overlooked in the scene um i don't really know the opportunity i don't really know what the answer is or maybe it's just you know 
some of the bigger acts coming together, piling their money or pulling their money together and opening up their own space and sort of programming it into a way where they're promoting up and coming talent from, you know, diverse background. Because I honestly, I, as much as it's an issue for black people coming up in a scene, I think it's an issue for most people. I think if you've been to any big metropolitan city, for sure, when you go to an underground nightclub, the crowds are f pretty diverse. They're pretty, you know, it's a pretty diverse crowd and unless you go to somewhere like fuse and you just see bare people that look like they're auditioning for love island right for the most part most raves in london have a very very diverse customer base very very diverse um but it's never reflected in a lineup whether it's girls or minorities it's just never reflected it's always really kind of baffled me in that respect and again uh, maybe the answer is just for people out there who uh, feel like they've been shortchanged to go out there and put on your own night, um, you know, um, make your own zines, or set up your own sort of meme pages and shit and promote your stuff that way. And then eventually kind of, you know, use those opportunity to showcase local talent or if it's a actual industry reform, which might come in the shape of, which which might come off the back of this lockdown, isn't it? The fact that nothing's going to be no club's going to be open probably until next year or the end of the year late earliest and the fact that most people want most um acts that are traveling from europe will find it difficult to travel to the uk because of these new you know because we're obviously in brexit so maybe this might be the change that we need in the scene because they, these clubs and bars are gonna have to rely on local talent they're gonna have to rely on just using their actual domestic contact book in order to make it work which might force them into some interesting choices and lineups and stuff i'm not too sure but i thought the interview with them um, seth and pete tongue was really interesting again i'll leave it in the i'll leave it in the description for you guys to read or to li listen to if you want to so definitely check that out it'll be 